Hello everyone, my name is Martijn. In the last tutorial we showed you how to make items and in the tu tutorial before that we showed you how to make a block. And in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make a world generator. So in this tutorial I'll show you how to make that block that you created spawn in the world naturally. And we'll do that in a way so that the next blocks that you add are really easy to world gen to. So first thing we need to do is create a world generator. We need to do that by registering it. So, uh, game registry dot register world generator. This takes two parameters. First is a world generator, an I world generator, and the second one is a weight. Now, the first one I'm gonna make a new orange world generator, just like that. And the second one is the weight, as I said. Now, the higher the number of the weight is, the lower they will be in the list of world generators. So if you want your world gen to happen after a, another mod, then you might want to put a high number in here. But if you want it to be the first one to ever world gen or anything, you might want to put a low number in here. I'm not worrying about it too much right now, so I'm just going to type in 10. So what we do right now is create that world generator. I'm going to do that in the package world, like that. I'm going to delete this. And right now we have an error and that is because we implement I world generator and if we open up that class you'll see that it is an interface and in any interface you need to um, override a method. So we need to do that in IntelliJ click on uh, press alt enter it will bring up the menu and click on implement method. Now for Clips, I thought you just had to hover, of, hover over it and select the right option. So, at this point, we want to um, separate three different world generator generations. Uh, first one is for the overworld, second one is for nether, and third one is for the end. So, what we're going to do is we're going to switch uh, worlds.provider.dimension ID. In case it's zero, that is the ID for the overworld, we're going to say generate overworld with some parameters. In case it's one, we're going to generate generate the end. In case it's minus, or minus one, we're going to generate the nether. Um, since it's the case, uh, since it's a switch statement, we might want to break it here. and add a default generate overworld like that now we need to have a few parameters because we need to reuse some of these uh, again in the later tutorial so we're gonna give it a random a world and two more coordinates. Now these chunk x and chunk z are the chunk coordinates. So the third chunk is at 3,0 for example. But that 3,0 doesn't um, display the actual block coordinate. So the block coordinate of the first block in the chunk. And that is what we want. So in order to get that coordinate we want to multiply the chunk x by 16. So if it was chunk coordinate 3, 0, it will now be 48, 0. And that's what we want to have. So also, we're going to do the same for chunk that. And we're going to copy this because we need that for each of those. Now, we are going to make these methods, um, but we're only going to worry right now about the overworld. We're not going to worry about the end and the nether because that is um, basically the same. You could do the same. Uh, and I'll only show it with the overworld for now. So I'm going to collapse those to save a little bit of space. Um, so we'll come back to this uh, on a later bit, on a later time. We first need to create the actual world generator. So the thing that is going to generate a world. So I'm going to make public void and I'm going to call it add ors. And what once you call this method, it will automatically spawn the ores. So I need to have a few parameters in order to know where I need to spawn the ores. First thing I need is to know what block I need to replace, uh, what block I need to place. I'm gonna import the right block. The second thing I need to know is in what world I need to place it. So I need a world uh, variable. I need a random, random. 
I need the block position of the chunk I need to place it. So block X position. So again, that is this number that I will get. I need to know the chunks of block Z position. I need to know what the vein size should be. So the minimum vein size and the maximum vein size. We need to know what the chance is to spawn. Let's go here in uh, the chance to spawn and we need to know the minimum Y and the maximum Y. So that's everything we need in order for our block to generate. So let's now make the logic behind this. Uh, the first thing we need to make is a world gen mineable and that is just an object that we need to create in order to, to generate. So world gen mineable, I'm going to call mine mineable, is new world gen mineable. This takes three parameters. First one is the block to replace, uh, the block to place. And that's going to be the first block uh, as defined up here. Second one is the feign size. Now we're going to do a little bit tr uh, tricky to automatically calculate a random feign size. So it's at least the minimum feign size plus, uh, we don't need that, minimum feign size plus any ra random number from the max feign size minus the minimum feign size. So anywhere between that. And uh, last thing we need is a block to replace, so we will do is do blocks.stone. So we're going to replace stone. Okay, so now we need to calculate the coordinates of where we want the vein to spawn. So we do that in a for loop, so for int is y, int y is 0, until y is the chance to spawn, so that's this number that you have to put in, and y++. plus plus. We want to say that, oops, we want to say that the int uh, pos x, so that's going to be a, a, an integer value that I'm creating, is going to be chunk uh, block x pos plus any random number from 0 to 15. So that will give me a random coordinate within the chunk. So also going to do the same for set. Plus set is block plus z plus random dot next in 15. Now for the y it's a little bit different. Int plus y is min y plus a random dot next in max y minus min y. So those are the coordinates that we need. And every time we have that, we want to say mineable.generate. And we need to give it a world, a random, uh, the pos x, the pos y, and the pos set. So that should be everything that we need to do. So now let's call this method once for our orange block. So add, blo add ors. Now the first thing we need again is the block to spawn, so mod blocks dot orange block. Second one is the world variable, a random variable, the x, the z. Min vein size is going to be 2, max vein size is going to be 8. The chance to spawn, I'm going to keep that at 20. Do not make this number too high or you will mess up some stuff and you do not want that. Uh, the last two are the min y is going to be 0 and the max y is going to be 30. So, again, we add an or of our orange block in the world random uh, on this chunk, on this chunk coordinates, um, in a vein size from 2 to 8, with a 20 chance to spawn. That is not percentage, that's just how many times within the area do you have to place it. I'm going to even lower it down, actually. Uh, within the y values of 0 and 30. So let's now create, um, yeah, let's now run Minecraft. It's going to take a little while. There we go. Now, in order for the world generation to happen, you have to create a new world. So if you're 
coming to me, I'm asked, and uh, with a bug that your blog doesn't show up and you haven't created a new world, you are rather stupid. So create a new world as I did, as I just did. I hope. <laughs> Not sure actually. And now we're gonna dig down to level 30 as soon as the world has spawned. Good enough for me. So we're gonna dig down to level 30 because that is where our block should be around. And remember I have the purple black texture still so that shouldn't be hard to find. So anywhere around here it should be able to find us. Wow that's cool. Yeah there we go. We got ourselves our block that we um, yeah, wanted to generate. So let's light that up. There we go. Our block is in the world spawned naturally. So that's how you do that. Um, the good thing about this way is that it's really easy for you to add another generation. You just have to add one line of code right here. So I hope you like this tutorial. I hope you uh, could follow along. If you have any questions, make sure to comment them on our website or on our Minecraft forum page. And the next tutorial will most likely be about, yeah, be about textures for, our, for blocks and not only normal textures, but textures for each side of the block. So, see you then.